what are some foundational things that you just kind of go, oh, yeah, of course. Stop for a minute and think about things that you had nothing to do with, but, oh, wow, might want to be thankful for them. Uh, what about creation? Like, all of it. <laughs> I, I didn't do that. You didn't do that. We, we didn't do that. But yet, are we regularly thinking, thank God for that. What a joy it is to see the beauty around us. What about faith? Have you ever thought about faith in a deeper way and realized that it is nothing that you have done, really? I mean, yeah, you can work on it, but the initial impact of faith is a gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 says that. That you didn't save yourself, I didn't save myself, so we can be thankful for faith that is a gift of God and for the salvation that comes through it that is also a gift of God. That's pretty amazing, right? What about <clears throat> where you were born, the opportunities you've had? Like, things fall into your lap and you... You didn't make them happen. They kind of happen to you, and they're in a positive way. Now, there's also the negative things, but we, we're, we're focused on the positive here today. And think about all the things that have happened that you just go, wow. It's amazing when we're born, where we're born, who we're born to, the families we have, the things around us that we didn't have hardly a thing to do, actually nothing to do with, but yet we just kind of take it for granted. Every now and then we stop and think, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if I had been born in a different place in a different time with different people? And at the same time, you go, no, 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 I really like where I'm at. This is, this is good. So this is our third sermon in the sermon series, Thank God. Uh, and this is our final one because this Thursday is Thanksgiving. It shouldn't be a shock, but if it is, a little warning. Take note, write it down, put an alarm on your phone, get ready. <laughs> Thanksgiving's here again. Um, and... Today's title is Say Thanks. And the reason we want to say thanks is because when we do not thank someone, we create a debt. And that debt lingers and deepens the longer we fail to thank someone for what they've done or what we've experienced or the things around us. And the, the chief someone we want to thank, of course, is God. But there's also the people in our lives that we fail to appreciate. And so we want to think about them as well and say thanks to them. I remember one time I was at a, I was not yet a parent and I was a missionary returning and uh, we were sitting down to a meal with a, a fellow former missionary slash now trainer of missionaries you might say and his child was with us and uh, I was correcting the child to say please and thank you and stuff and the father looked at me and said don't do that. <laughs> and I thought, oh, he goes, you know, that's my job. I'll take care of it. And at the same, like, he doesn't have to beg to say please, and he doesn't have to say thank you for every single thing. And I was thinking, wow, okay, well, that's different. Because I was raised to say thank you all the time. I mean, think about it. You say thank you constantly if you were trained as I was. You say, hey, thanks for taking my order when you're out to eat, right? And then you say, hey, thanks for delivering the food. And, hey, thanks for um, bringing me the check. <laughs> right? Like, we say thanks constantly, if you've been trained to. And, and meaning it's kind of important as well. Let's uh, begin in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for your opportunity uh, that you've given us to come and pray and to be involved with one another, listening to a message about your word and thinking your thoughts. God, help us to be a thankful people a people remembering all that you've done and living in that way. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, before I really begin to preach, um, there, I, I just want to respond to Phil. I love Phil. He's a great guy. And I genuinely laughed at everything he said. Um, sometimes I am shocked at the length of my own sermons. I have to tell you, in truth, I go home and I download the worship service and then I edit it. And I always look. And, and the other week I went, oh, that was really too long. 
And one week, not too long ago, I went, wow, that was much shorter than I remember. <laughs> so I am often surprised at the length or the, or the shortness of my sermons. And I can never promise you how long they're going to be because I allow myself to prepare and then share what I feel God is giving me at the moment. So if you want them shorter, I don't know. If you want them longer, I don't know. Um, just a thought. There are some churches where 12 minutes is the maximum they can have for a sermon. There are others, friends of mine, who have shared their sermons with me, and they were an hour and a half. Be thankful. <laughs> I am. I don't think I'd want to do it in 12 minutes, and oh my goodness, an hour and a half? If I was, if I was expected to do that constantly? I don't know. Anyways. Uh, Luke 17, 11 through 19, uh, unexpressed gratitude. As Jesus continued on toward Jerusalem, he reached the border between Galilee and Samaria. And you, you must know that, I think you probably do, if you've been in church ever, you know that the Jews and the Samaritans were not buddies. They were not chummy. And generally the Jews avoided Samaria at all costs. They went the whole way around it if they had to, if they could remotely. And if they were in a hurry and they had to go through it, it's like they held their nose and prayed, oh God, let me not see them, talk to them, touch them, be near them. Let me just go through as fast as possible. I mean, it was that kind of an attitude. Um, and as he entered a village there, ten men with leprosy stood at a distance crying out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Now as we hear that, we need to keep in mind that leprosy of that day and time was incurable and it was basically a death sentence that, that was a very, very, very painful, slow death. And generally, you, you could not be around others if you had leprosy back in the day. You, you were sent off and you went off because you knew you did not want to infect everybody else and they didn't know exactly how it worked and, and so they just went off by themselves and all the lepers got together and they made their own little community. And so I'm curious if this village was a village of lepers. Not only did he, was he in Samaria or on the border of it, he went to a village, it would appear, of lepers because there's 10 of them, right? And they're shouting, Jesus, Master, and that phrase, master, it comes from the idea of one who is actually a disciple of Jesus. Usually the non-disciple types did not yell, Jesus, master. They would have said, Jesus, eh, <laughs> maybe rabbi. Like, we, we'll recognize you claim to be a teacher and we'll, we'll give you that. But generally it was, eh. So, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. He looked at them and said, go. Now, <laughs> the first words out of his mouth are go. <laughs> Think about that. They've heard that for a long time. And they have to tell everybody everywhere they go, stay away, unclean, unclean. They yell as they walk into a community or as they go anywhere, unclean. And everybody's looking at them and going, go away, go away, you're awful, get out of here, come on, leave us alone. Why, why are you coming here? Don't curse us, right? But that's not it. <laughs> but the first word, you know, go, show yourselves to the priests. Why are they going to go show themselves to the priests? What is that about? Well, the, the basic idea is singular. If you are healed of leprosy or any skin disease, you have to go to the priest who is much like a doctor then. And, and you, they would inspect you and say, well, you have an infectious skin disease and it's, it's contagious, therefore stay away from everybody and go bathe and do these things and offer these sacrifices and come back and see me if it clears up. And if it doesn't, just stay away from everybody because you're never going to get well and you might have leprosy and off you go. And, and at the same, if you get healed, you come back and you go, look, look, it's all gone, all this is gone. And they go, oh, yeah, you're healed. Praise God, now offer these sacrifices out of thanks, and you, you will go on your way back to your family and enjoy life. Now, there's another level of this, right? If ten lepers go together to the priest, it is an act of faith. Like, they haven't been healed yet. And if they all go together, imagine what that would mean, and how the priest would be like... <gasps> What? We've not seen this before. Ten of you and you're all together? Who sent you here? What's going on? And that would bring greater praise to Jesus, in fact. 
they would raise him up in the community again, and people would go, who is this guy? Who is this Jesus? How did he send ten lepers? And, and then the whole story would be told and told and told, and everybody would be going, wow, this Jesus, he's amazing, right? And, and then, at the same time, if they're healed, there are sacrifices of praise being offered. Thanksgiving sacrifices, right? So, and then, as they went, they were cleansed. They were healed. Amazing, right? They had faith, and they went. And it was almost a test. Do you trust? Do you believe God can do it? Do you believe Jesus will do it? Do you believe it will be done through Jesus to you? And they said, we do, and off they went. Amazing. They were cleansed. One of them. One. <laughs> Only one. When he saw that he was healed, all the others saw it too, but this one paid attention, came back. One of them came back to Jesus because he knew who it was that the healing came through. How did he get healed? It was Jesus. So he's shouting. Remember, they have to go everywhere shouting, unclean, unclean. So they're good at shouting. They've gotten to be accustomed to that, right? <laughs> but he's shouting, Praise God! Praise God! Like, that's a whole different, right? He doesn't have to shout, unclean, go away, I'm filthy, I'm unclean, get out of here, don't look at me, like, right? Instead, he's shouting, praise God. Isn't that amazing? He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, and you could say that's a sense of worship. He worshiped at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he had done, and, and appropriately so, Right? And then this man was a Samaritan. Special note of that. One came back, praised God, worshipped Jesus essentially, and yet he was a Samaritan. That's a powerful statement. Do you remember any other Samaritans that stand out? There was one called the Good Samaritan. Here's another Good Samaritan. Slightly different, but yet really wow. So the question is, in the leper colony, the leper village, do you think there were Samaritans and Galileans, Jews and Samaritans together? Do you think maybe because of their leprousness that even the Romans might join in to that colony if they had leprosy? I think they would, because when you have leprosy and everybody else around you has leprosy, all the other things fall off, don't they? I mean, well, that was a bad joke that I didn't mean. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> when you have leprosy, you, you lose feeling in, in the ends of your hands and your feet, right? And any cut can start to become infected, and you can bleed really badly, and that's how they lose parts of their body because they don't know that there's a damage to it, and they, they don't care for it, and then it gets infected, and they have to cut it off. And so they lose parts of their body. Um, but your identity is, is gone when you have leprosy. Because everybody else that has leprosy is just like you. And you're just like them. And it doesn't matter if you're a Samaritan, a Jew, or a Roman. You need to live. And in order to live, you band together with all those that have leprosy. So I would imagine that the other nine are not Samaritans. They might even be Galileans, like Jesus. He was known as a Galilean, right? And so here it is, this one man, a Samaritan, comes back. And Jesus asked, didn't I heal ten men? Where, where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. Well, he already was healed. Now, another translation of that is your faith has saved you. And see, they counted those things very much the same. To be saved and to be healed as a leper, it's the same, isn't it? And keep in mind, when we think of salvation, we think heaven, off there, later. When, when Jesus was teaching about salvation, he was talking about the bringing together of communities into a salvation experience where they are no longer ruled by sin and death in this time today, but instead that their hearts are now open and the defenses have dropped and they are thriving together as they did in the Garden of Eden. So that's a very, very different thing. So your faith has healed you, your faith has saved you. Oh, look at that. 
I'm surprised again. The sermon's almost over. I kid you not. It's not long and we're done. <laughs> Faith challenges today are these. Express gratitude. As Jim was saying, if you're happy, let your face know it. But if you're thankful, tell the person you're thankful for. If you're thankful, tell God what you're thankful for. If you have any thanks, that person that has it deep within, it means absolutely nothing to God or to the person in front of you if you don't express it. Keep in mind, there were nine lepers who said nothing. And Jesus was kind of offended, wasn't he? He was kind of like, what, what happened? I healed ten of you. Why is there only one? And this foreigner on top of it. I mean, none of my own people came back. Like, what's up with that? Right? So, when you feel it, express it. The other day, this might be a little awkward too, because I think you should do that also with love. The other day I was talking with a man who lives up the street from me, a brother in Christ who attends another church. And uh, I was walking my dog, and he was coming back from a run. We happened to meet in the park, and um, I, we just started talking. An hour later, we finished. And it was a wonderful, meaningful, deep conversation about spiritual things and everything. And I'd never said to this man anything close to this before, but as we wrapped up our time together, I said, I love you. And he was kind of like, <laughs> and I was like, thank you so much. I had a great time talking with you. I'm sorry I took up all your time. No, no, no. It was great. I love you. Thank you for that. Like, that's the way we're called to live. Express what you feel in your heart when you're thankful, when you feel love, when you feel compassion, when you feel something, especially of positive nature. Now, if you have nothing kind to say, you might want to keep that a little bit and think about how you're going to word that. <laughs> but you should definitely express gratitude. The unkind things, you might want to find kind, appropriate ways to say them so that people know that you've been hurt, offended, wounded. That's important, but we're not talking about that today. But moving on, I don't want to tell you and encourage you to bottle up your anger and all the negative stuff. That's, that's not at all what I'm saying. But the gratitude, my goodness, we miss that so much. Even those of us who have been trained to be thankful, sometimes we just forget. And um, to loudly praise God. Sometimes I remember that song from my childhood, uh, something about shout. It was, it was in the song the whole way through it. Jim probably remembers it, right? Um, it's like shout, and you were supposed to shout your praise to God, shout to God, shout praise to God, something like that. And I remember as a kid, I would lose my voice singing that song. And as an adult, I don't think I've ever really lost my voice shouting praise to God. Like, I, I think it might be good to return back to that, to consider again how awesome and amazing God has been to us, and then to really, truly thank God, to say thank you, God, and to maybe shout it every now and then. And the other one is to live like a foreigner. Think about it. Have you ever been a foreigner? I remember it was really strange to be in China and learning Chinese and calling myself a foreigner because I'm not the foreigner. They are. <laughs> but I was in their country, and I was the foreigner. And in Chinese, it's Ren. It's an outside country person is what that means. <laughs> not my country person. But think about it. If you've ever been somewhere where you were the foreigner, how did you live in that culture? Weren't you kind of amazed, surprised? Didn't you find delight in little things? Weren't you always curious and studying and learning and just like, oh my. And if you weren't, why? Why weren't you? As a foreigner, I was so curious. I was always learning, always growing, and always very appreciative and reminding everyone I was doing the best I could to say thank you all the time. And the funny thing is in Chinese, you're not supposed to say thank you all the time. And I was saying like, thank you when the bill came and they're like, Knock that off. <laughs> and I was like, no, that's what I'm supposed to do. It's how I've always been trained. And they said, among friends, we don't really say thank you. We say something else, and we do something else, and we just repay it. And I'm like, no, I have to say thanks. I, I, I know that's the right thing in my heart to do. And they're like, no, not in this culture. And yet, I think, I think the culture of thankfulness and gratitude, expressing it, is right. It might just be that I need to 
try it differently in their culture. Find a way that they would say, yeah, you can say that. That'll work, right? So live like a foreigner. Now, you know it's really over. I'm reminding you again, and then we're going to say our prayer. Express gratitude, loudly praise God, live like a foreigner. I think if you do that, you're going to find joy. More joy. More joy and more joy in your life. So let's say it together. Thank you, Father. Let's try again. Thank you, Jesus. A little louder. Thank you, Spirit. <laughs> let's pray together with Jesus. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Father, as we continue to pray, we ask that you would give us hearts that are thankful. That not just our hearts, but our mouths, that our mouths would just be full of thanks. That we would tell people on a regular basis, thank you, thank you, thank you. And that if it moves us, if you move us, that we would also tell them we love them. God, let us not forget how much grace, kindness, love, and, and joy you have given to us. God, may we give that in return to others. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen.